Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Hope you had a nice break. We are going to get our next run under, uh, underway in a second here. We are Indie Thon Summer 2023, raising money for the Samaritans. Uh, and I have got Coral Killer coming up with the Tide the Tasmanian Tiger run. Uh, just as a quick reminder before we get started, we do have an incentive open for this run. Uh, with $50 total, we'll have a special run of Cheat Percent that will be performed after this run. Uh, that is currently at $5. So if you want to see a little more speedrunning tack on to the end of this, go ahead and get those donations in. Coral Killer, go ahead and take it away. Uh, thank you. Uh, I want to talk about Cheat Percent for a second. The uh, run that he's talking about is very interesting, uh, I must say. So if you guys really would like to see that, then I'd recommend getting those donations in. It's a huge gauntlet of lots of cool uh, tech movement speed strats. Mom can probably explain more about it. Yeah, so essentially Cheat Percent All Levels is a category where you run into the level itself and then there's an exit portal at the end of the level so it's basically just parkour and jump past everything as fast as you can use whatever movement tech you can you don't need to worry about any collectibles so it's quite different to a lot of the other stuff that we get in different categories of this game but that's not what we're doing today so coral how about you tell us what we're doing we're going to be doing all golden cogs meaning we're going to be collecting all the golden cogs in the game mm-hmm so yeah, there is 90 golden cogs in Tide the Tasmanian Tiger. This isn't any percent, so we have to kind of take a few different approaches to things and kind of like complete the game out of order in a sense. We have to skip different hubs and stuff like that. We're not doing the standard, the standard game that you would typically play here, essentially. We are going through and just laser focusing on the golden cogs, essentially. Yep. You think it's a good time for us to start one? Shut the run? Yeah, I think we're looking pretty good. You guys all, right. all good on tick? I believe we're good to go whenever you're ready to start. All right, so uh, down on five, or start on five. Five, four, three, two, one, go. What? So, uh, all right, start so the... Oh, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, That's so the happens. first skip literally comes up within like the first like 10 seconds here. So this fence here, Quarrel's going to do just a little jump and a bike across it. And we're going to be going into shipwrecks to start things off here. And that's because high speed running, ever since the um, latest patch of the PC version dropped kind of around two years ago, has been really focused on a movement tech called ground swimming. So we've essentially just jumped into this level here, gotten the ability to swim, and then we're going to go see you later, and we're going to go back to the first level of the game so that we have that swimming movement um we'll get the second boomerang as well when we're in this um what is usually meant to be the first level and that's kind of required for us to come back to that swimming later level later on so kind of just some funny things with the routing this category is very different to much of the other stuff which makes it very enjoyable one to see in terms of the tech that you see showcased Alright, so those are your first few cogs here in this level. Pearl's just going into what we call Spy Swim here. And instead of using it for the spy eggs like you would typically do here, Quarrel's kind of just going to swim up on the staircases here. And then he's going to be heading down towards more of the cogs. So we're kind of able to extend like a few of these swims longer than we would typically be able to in any percent. And it's also just swimming in like very different places to what you would typically get. So if you've seen Pi ever run at other speedrunning marathons and such like that. This is this is a very different one. I think this is actually the first marathon that Old Golden Cogs has been done before, if I'm correct, Coral? Yeah, that is right. I was actually just talking earlier to the staff about it. I can't remember what the name was, but I think it was good staff. <laughs> I'll get that for you. But yeah, it's... It's one of the very different categories. Um, usually we would be like hitting under this bridge, for example, but now we're gonna be going like, see you later bridge, and we're gonna go the other way. <laughs> Just randomly running backwards through the level and such there. All right. But yes, and uh, being lovely in the scene up there as well. All right, so that's seven golden cogs through two up. There's nine levels in the game, so there's 10 cogs per level here. We're just gonna be slowly working our way through here. 
getting the swim over to the one on the pontoon. Things have been going pretty smooth so far. Um, yeah. I think the hardest thing that's coming up, really, is probably... Uh, you're gonna have spire swimming and stuff like that that you're dealing with on Rex Marks, but I assume that you go to the Walk in the Park second, right? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go to Walk in the Park second. Yeah, so we have some really hard skips in Walk in the Park here. Um, probably the main one that we want to mention is Buzz Cheese Swim. This is essentially nearly a frame perfect trick that also requires you to be lined up with like this really narrow, narrow, like band of acceptable angles and such here so hopefully Coral's going to get that one um he's recently implemented a moving setup um that I told him recently and he's got a few other backups for that but we'll see we'll see if we lock out on this one so he's going to grab the cog right at the start there and he's going to be going for one of the hardest skips in the game I won't be able to do the moving setup for this first bus chasing attempt, but the next one we'll be able to because uh, before bus chasing we need to go and grab this golden dog over here. Ah, okay, okay. Ah, right, difference in the category for where you're approaching it from, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's just easier in my opinion to come over here and try this setup. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. If I can, if I can interject real quickly, uh, Tech is asking if we can have Coral turn up his mic a bit. It's going a bit quiet. Yes, one second. Thank you. All right, hopefully that sounds a lot better. And we've got Buster Swim, so that sounds also great. Dude, I forgot about that backwards swim behind it. Yeah, I know, me too, until I rediscovered the Buster Swim setup. It's crazy. <laughs> I forgot about that one. It was one that we discussed while we're asking it there. That yeah, that's happen. an unfortunate one there. That's probably only like 10 seconds or whatever, so not too big of a deal. Mm. And we're also going to be setting up for um, a death warp as well over the next little bit. So we would have hit a um, bunny as well, kind of like just before um, the any percent slide one skip. And essentially we're going to be taking damage kind of through the water slide section and then teleporting back down to that other section of the level so that we can, I think we then consider doing a second buzz cheese one, isn't it? Uh, yeah, because I uh, spawned right at the very beginning of the level, so... I don't know mm -hmm. if any doonies in the lower area, but there, there might be one, and it might be faster. To yeah, yeah, there, that. there's a bunny there. Oh, I've, I've never activated it, so I'll get to go and look into that. <laughs> so that's oh, probably yeah. a good so, like, 15 seconds of losing everyone now. They're just sort of about. <laughs> Possibly, but you got the little damage there, and then we just use the frolls, and then we teleport back to the beginning without having to go for any menus or anything. So nice and quick there. Slides are one of the fastest ways to to get back there to the start. Ah, uh, that's probably because of that kind of, um, the diff warp. Uh, no, sorry. I think you were looking on the different side of the tree, but you gotta dive. Yeah. Once again, that. it's a very hard skip there. Yep, there we go. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, there's a dunny just here right there. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> But yeah, anyways, that is the cog under the bridge there. Then we're going to dip down and get this cog here. And then we're going to jump. I think we go back down into the water, like into yeah. the valley, right? Yeah. Yeah, there's another cog kind of like on a little platform there. And then there's like a pretty difficult one where you need to kind of like yeet yourself off the side of like the top of this valley or whatever. You kind of need to do it here a little bit as well. Yeah. Um, but there's another one that's a bit of a fervor jump that you need to land on top of this little pillar. So we'll see if you can get that one. It's... It's one that always sketches me out when I try to go for it. So just here. Nicely done. That jump is deceptively, deceptively difficult to make. Anyways, into shipwrecks for the second time. Um, what would you say your favorite cog is? <laughs> That's a weird question. I've never been asked that before. Um... You know, we, we sometimes ask each other what our favorite thunder eggs are, but, you know, the cogs aren't usually named. <laughs> it's like we yeah. have to say, you know, the cog over yonder. Yeah, I, I actually feel like when it's when you're, when you're it's done well, the final final cog in walk is probably my favorite one to collect in the run. Because if you get it, if you uh, collect it quickly and nicely, then it looks so cool, honestly. Mm -hmm. cool, yeah, and you nailed it on that one as well, so that's yep. very nice. Yeah. I think my favorite one for AGC is probably this one in ship, the one at the very top of the spire. Just the way that you extend your spires from there is it's beautiful. Oh yeah, that one's pretty fun too. <laughs> I like that one a lot. 
Mm -hmm. And then the final celebratory cog is pretty fun as well. Mm -hmm. So right there, I just did this uh, trick where I jumped on a seahorse and I was able to get up onto this little ledge and uh, get up to this water area up here. I, I really cannot think of anything to talk about with this run. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Yes. All good. That's what I'm here for. It's like, yeah, it's like 5 in the morning for me. I woke up about 45 minutes ago, so I'm not very there yet, if you know what I mean. However, the buzz cheese ones were there. Yeah. And I'm pretty <laughs> happy about those. <laughs> Indeed. And that final jump and walk. So anyways, um, I think we're also pretty good on the route so far as well, which is sick. Yeah. Um, so here... Um, Remember, do you get a ground swim off? Of no, you don't. You just swim no, straight just, up to the yeah, area. Yeah, we don't just you? swim all the way to the <laughs> other side. Mm -hmm. my, in my first run, I did get out of the water and get a ground swim, but then I realized, oh wait, I literally just wasted time because I could have swim all the way there. <laughs> I, I mean, I guess to ground swim first too. Right? I wonder yeah, if it would make time. sense to like try and swim up that thing by yeah, using yeah. the like nest swim swim spot or something. Yeah, it might be. Uh, quicker slightly to like you know actually swim up to the golden cog instead of or to get a ground swim and swim up to the golden cog. I can. Yeah. It's a funny one. Um also for anyone that's not familiar with like how swimming and stuff works in Thai, um so like you would have seen Coral do it various times already where he's swimming out of the water. But essentially the game gets confused. It's like is he in water? Is he not in water? And it kind of just has like a little bit of an internal conflict there. It doesn't know what to do, so it kind of just lets you swim. Um, the main thing that you need to know, though, is that you're not able to swim up anything that is vertical or overhanging. Um, and then you can't get too far above the ground unless there's like water close, closely underneath you. But if you go over deep water, then you'll get warped down to the water. So there's like a few kind of like arbitrary rules and stuff like that to it, but. Once you get the hang of it, it's actually pretty simple, and the movement feels pretty nice. Alright, so coming up in just a moment here is one of the hardest skips in the game. Um, this one is in most categories as well, actually. And this is the mighty Spire Swim here. Coral's also going to be having a slightly different starting position for his Spire Swim as well, which makes it especially difficult to start off with. Um, I'm not sure how far he's going to swim around. Okay, so he's coming off here. So this is kind of like five, ten seconds earlier, and we get a first try there. Beautiful. Ah, you're going for that set up there. I see. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I, I went that far, because I do not like mm -hmm. going for the first for fire swim. Uh, <laughs> All right, and now we're going to see the full spire swim up here. This is the one that I was talking about. Ah, it's hard to get. But when you nail it, just swimming directly into that cog is so satisfying. At least you fell down onto one of the little platforms though, so you didn't yeah. lose all of your height there, which was nice. Yeah, you don't lose that much time if you fail that last part of the swim, so it's a... Uh, that was good. Oh, come on, Cor, where's your spams, mate? I don't wanna... I don't wanna, like, you know, <laughs> do it in the microphone too much, but... For those who don't know, usually at this point in my runs, I always... Just because I want to be as loud and annoyed as possible on my stream, I spam he my space He smashes the keyboard. He yeah. sometimes does it just to mess with me. Yeah, a lot of the time I do it just a mess with anybody watching my stream, not just long, but... <laughs> he cares about you, chat. He didn't yeah. spam it today. Yeah. Alright, so we get a little hub free swim action going on here. Very nicely done. Yeah, besides the little mess up at the very end, but that's not a big deal. And that loses like half a second. Yeah. Alright, so... We are into Liar Liar, Pants on Fire. That is Lenny the Liar Bird. And we're going to jump on his back and then go out of bounds or something like that. I don't know. Drop down onto the cog here. And then um, I think we do... I can't remember the order or so. <laughs> so this one's going to be a little bit more on you for the order here. But um, I think we have a cog um, kind of... Cog in the tree is the next one. I'm fortunate on that turnaround. <laughs> yeah, no, the cog in the tree isn't the next one. The next one is this one. Ah, yeah, which yeah. At, which at that point I should have just, like, went up the stepping stones, but that's fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, do some do, of you... Do we do the cog in the tree in a different order? Yeah, I do it yeah. in the second entry, but... 
Uh, mm -hmm. So somebody might have noticed that I went into the menu and just altered my settings of it, and that is because there's a bug in this game where for some reason, even if you have shadows like disabled, which is because you can do that in the PC version of this game, unlike the uh, modern and old console versions, which is something I find really nice. Uh, for some reason, this game just turns on the shadows whenever you exit the uh, big, the big building in this level. And so I just take a few seconds in my runs to uh, turn off the shadows, and because the shadows actually lag up my computer a bit, so in reality I'm probably saving a bit of time doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, one of our um, beloved modders as well, um, XMK Cut, good friend of mine. Um, he did some research onto that as well, and essentially what happens is the shadows get turned on just so that the like cutscene for that like mini boss fight in the level or whatever looks more cinematic, looks cooler, that kind of thing. <laughs> and then they set the shadows back to default. But in this case, default is having your shadows on medium when we usually have our shadows off. So uh, mine, mine goes on to low whenever I uh, get out of there, but. Anyway, yeah, I just did, like, one of the hardest tricks in the run, and Ron didn't even mention it. <laughs> well, that's because I had total faith. Yeah. But yeah, um, yeah. that one that one can be a little bit strange there. You did have to go for a bite on it, um, but yeah, that's because, like, I sometimes that ledge it. grab can just be an absolute scam. Yeah, I don't even like going for the ledge grab. Like, if I can bite, I will bite. Mm -hmm. One time, yeah. one time I did a run and I bit, but then I landed on the exact edge, and so during the like you know animation, you slid off. I, yeah, he slid off during the oh. animation of him hit the ground. <laughs> now I um, I think Kama was saying um, Kama is the world record holder for every single category as well. By the way, um, I think Kama said that it is actually possible to rush that cycle, but that it is absolutely wicked difficult. So, yeah, I've never your eyes aren't to... deceiving you. It is possible, it's just not easy. Yeah, I've never personally been able to do it, so I just wait for it in my runs, but luckily that's, I think about, I've... that's like the most downtime we have in the run. Yeah, I yeah. I think I've been bonked by the side of the, by the, side of the floating platform a few times. I'll show that. Wait. Wait, is it actually faster to jump on that? No, I just am because I have the time to. Because we need to wait for oh. us to go back there anyway. <laughs> okay, so you're just styling on us. Uh, for the most part, yeah, but I was actually kind of messing up styling because I couldn't <laughs> get on top of the final column. <laughs> yeah, Alright, so now over up to in a the volcano. Minutes. You want to talk about the volcano here, Coral, because uh, this is one of my favorite strategies. Yeah, you know more about it, so I'd, I'm going to let you talk about it because I honestly have no idea how to explain it. <laughs> Okay, so you see this little thing here with some toilet paper. That's called Dunning. It's basically an outdoor toilet in Australia. Okay, um, right. This game is an Australian game. Yeah, we, um, we, never, we never, we never, we uh, never mentioned that. <laughs> mm -hmm. So Coral's going to be taking some damage along this area here, um, and essentially there is a dunny, you know, another one of those toilets that is just standing outside of the volcano, and it has this absolutely comically large hitbox for activating it, for changing your respawn point. So essentially we just walk over to the we just walk over to the side of this um, volcano. So you can see there's one that just popped up there underneath. That's not where we want it to be. And Coral's just going to come down here. Okay. Oh, okay, so you did one where you activated the dunny during the fall. Usually we actually come back and hit the lava there, so I think the way that Coral did that actually saved a few seconds. I've yes. not seen that before. That's pretty dope. That's how I do that in all my runs. I don't know. Like, that's how Kama did it in his run, too, so I just talked over Kama did. Okay, okay. Cool. Anyways, um, so the reason why Coral is... Um, what's he called? The reason why Coral only ended up getting five of the cogs in Liar Liar because you might have noticed that there. Essentially, he didn't get all of the cogs that you would typically get in the level. And that's because there is... <laughs> Tried to go for the damage cancel, did ya? Yeah, and I messed it up. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty hard one. I don't typically go for that. Um, I go for it just because I almost never mess it up that badly. I guess today is just mm -hmm. one of those days. <laughs> But yeah, so the reason why Coral only got five cogs in Walk in the Park, uh, Liar Liar there, 
is because he is going to be needing to come back to Liar Liar later on because he doesn't have the flame rings right now. Typically in any percent, by the time that you get to hub free, you would have the flame rings and the frosty rings, but he's only got one set of doom rings right now, ignoring yeah. the aqua rings. So he's going to, after finishing off these last two cogs here in Rex Marks the spot, he's going to be going to hub two getting even more boomerangs he's going to get to 75 in total i think it is and then that is enough cogs to unlock the kaboomerang and the kaboomerang is going to be able to explode these ice blocks and these ice blocks are essentially the only progression blocker that actually remains in the all golden cogs category um, one of them can be bypassed with a bunyip but the one on liar cannot be bypassed so we're forced to have to go to Julius's lab in, Rainbow's, in Rainbow Cliffs and unlock the Kaboomerang so that we're able to go ahead and get that. Um, get those last two cogs in the game there. It also sa saves a bit of time in Black Stump, but once again, like it wouldn't be required if it wasn't for the one in Liar. I mean, the one in Black Stump would honestly be such a hassle if we had to get the Bunny up for it, because the Bunny is very far out of the way. Well, I mean, like I guess you could make it work, because you kind of need to go towards the Bunny up anyway in that. Like in the second mm -hmm. half of uh, Blackstone. Yeah, yeah, we, we'd be able to make it work pretty well, but ultimately it's, ultimately it's the one on Liar that ends up making the route kind of a little bit funny in terms of your level order. So it's like we go into Hub 1 and we do some weird ordering on your Hub 1 stuff as well, then we go Hub 3, then Hub 2, and then Hub 3 again. Um, Hub 2 and your first entrance of Hub 3 are interchangeable though, there is no advantage per se, you don't save any time by doing one before the other, um, unless you care about your shadows stuff, which we just reset our shadows, because we can't, we can't be dealing with shadows, we're speedrunners. Yep. The and shadows yeah, just is actually one of the only, um things that I personally would let or would want to allow macros to be used in this run for because it is kind of a, a hassle to think, to know how to exactly turn off the shadows as quickly as possible. It'd be cool if we could just have a bu little button to press and the game would just do it for us and it'd take like two seconds. But I, so I think Matt actually um, Matt actually allow um, what do you call it? Matt actually created a mod that essentially just makes it so that instead of setting the shadows to default it sets them to off. So, oh. pretty simple mod. I mean, yeah, if that's ever allowed in runs, then that'd be pretty cool. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, also, as Panda's mentioning in the chat as well, we have an incentive here. Oh, that. <laughs> that yeah. was unfortunate. Yeah, I'm just gonna. <laughs> the walk the with little this. ledge there, caught, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if it's faster. Yeah. To, it's probably faster to go and, like, try to get another boost, but. Probably I'm, like, I'm like 40 that, seconds yeah. ahead of my uh, splits right now, so I'm... I, I 40 I seconds can, ahead? Yeah, I'm 37 seconds ahead out of... Uh, or was 37 seconds ahead out of Rex Marks. Oh, dang. Might be able to take second place. Maybe. I don't know. Hopefully. <laughs> But yeah, as Panda mentioned as well, um, we have an incentive on this run, so if you are wanting to see cheap percent all levels, feel free going below the stream. Um, I think there might also be some links in chat. Yeah, there is some links in chat above there. And that is raising money for the Samaritans charity. So if anyone is interested in that, please feel free to contribute there. But that pretty much has us to the end of the swimming section here and then we're going to be leaving the ice and i think we do like a little funny like shooting the ice from underneath thing yeah. don't we? and then we get the one in the middle it's a little bit of like this funny angle that you need to get your camera to um there we go <laughs> dude that rock just hit your camera <laughs> yeah no i s <laughs> like i saw that and just immediately killed the enemy because i didn't want to have any more problems yeah, so the rest of this level is actually kind of boring because it's pretty much just running from point A to point B. And this level yeah, is it's a bit uh, of... huge, so it's going to be in a couple minutes before the end of the level. Yeah, it's also one that, like, I wonder if uh, it would make sense for us to, like, at some point, like, consider routing in, like, a lawn swim or whatever to the top of the mountain, and then you get a death warp um, back down for this last cog or something. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure either, but if I ever do feel like going for a long swim in this run, I always go, like, left in the little underground swimming cave instead of right, like I did, and then I can just do, like, a long swim where I actually know how to do it. There's probably a way to do but the do you... long swim out of the, uh, ice, ice, ice silver pond, but... 
Like, I can't really yeah. be bothered to find one. Or, like, hope, Dude, for a moment I thought you were gonna go into icicles. <laughs> yeah, sometimes, sometimes I do, but then I caught myself. <laughs> it's just Ooh, baby, baby, baby. muscle memory. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing that sucks about this game. It's that, like, every category is very slightly different from the next, and so you can't, like... You need to know exactly where you need to go. It's, like, with everything. Like, you can't but, mix and match two categories. A category be. that is absolutely nothing like the rest of them. It has my heart. It is multiplayer level locked. <laughs> Best category, in my opinion. In my opinion, it was very fun, too, when I played it, so I can't, I can't uh, <laughs> argue against that. You can't deny me. Yeah, but it's still you don't deny like, me. It looks like I'm still going to be about 30 seconds ahead out of this, so I really didn't lose that much time this level. It's pretty good. Yeah, nice, nice. Wow, exactly. um, and just, just for context as well, um, Quarrel is currently third place on the board, I think. Um, just had the board here. So 3605 is your PB on the board. Um, is this um, versus your actual PB that you set offline though? Um, I didn't set it offline. I just I just lost the Twitch one. Ooh, ah, that's, yeah. the wrong, that's the wrong thing. I need to go in, back into the... Wrong save? Oh boy. Yeah, my controller you fell. controller menu? My controller fell off my desk on my uh, legs. And, and then it must the, have made an input. Yeah, yeah, yeah so... I mean, that's like, just that's for... like the worst that's happened so far. Which I'm... Mm -hmm. I, also, I somehow split the bridge. Uh-oh. Uh that's it. <laughs> uh, that's probably because you um, went into shift or something. Okay, there we go. I managed to like, undo the split. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just for context um, as to what we were talking about there, why Coral ended up loading into the wrong label. Essentially, if you touch like a single button on your controller, like as you're like kind of just about to go into that load game menu, what happens is the controller defaults to selecting game one, your left save slot. But when you're menuing through keyboard and mouse, you go onto your center save slot, your game slot two, essentially. So yeah. Quora was expecting to be kind of like selected onto that game slot two, but then he bumped the controller or whatever, slid away, um, and that ended up putting him onto the wrong save slot. And the reason why he ended up bumping it there is because Outback is a very strange level. So if you've oh. ever really played the game, <laughs> There, Yo, the one we got a thunder egg! <laughs> Yo, we got a thunder egg! Yep. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, this level essentially, you do a forward input on your controller and then a side input on the keyboard and then adds them to, um, adds the two together, um, vector addition, and you get an extra 41% movement speed. Anyways, that brings us into Bridge on the River Tide. This is one of the most interesting levels in my opinion route wise for this like well okay it's it's not like the most like how do you put it it's not like the most complicated in terms of the routes or anything like that but it almost just feels like this level was designed with like with agc in mind in a, in a way like i don't know <laughs> yeah this level really is really well. satisfying to go through for this run this is probably my favorite overall level of the run minus the uh, very difficult tricks that i have to do in it and there's only really like one or two that are kind of a little bit mamey. Yeah. Oh, you. Oh, like the worst uh, category this this level's in has to be uh, save the buildings for them. That is <laughs> like I will never be good at those tricks. Common loses his mind. He's always got like worst category, worst level, save the buildings. Yes. <laughs> So, the reason why Save the Bilbies is so funky on this level is because you have to jump out of bounds and do some parkour around like the inverted side of this map just here on your left and then get two of the Bilbies, one of them from out of bounds and another one from like underneath the level essentially. It's, it's pretty funky. <laughs> but it is really fun and I have done it before. I believe my PB is only about uh, two and a half minutes behind the world record. And I believe mm -hmm. the world record's like a 13 minutes or something like that. Yeah, that feels like it's in the right ballpark. Uh, okay, wrong ballpark. 18 minutes. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, I know I know that uh, cheap percent all levels is 12 minutes, and I don't think that. Ah, uh, yeah, think that's probably the, the one that you're thinking there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
All right, anyway, it's got that um, delight skip skip there. And the reason why it's called skip skip is essentially delight skip is this old, like, um, old skip that was only really viable in 100% ever. Um, it was essentially found by Bra, one of the speedrunners and one of the moderators for the game at the moment. Um, it was found by his brother. And essentially, it's like, everyone's like, okay, favorite skip, it's this one. Just yeah, it is a really fun skip to do if you can pull it off perfectly. It's just like a little fun jump off of the tree, and then the light. It's a, it's a cool name. Yeah. You can't knock it. Yeah. You can't knock it. Anyways, coming in for the final cog here. This is going to be the final cog for Hub 2. And then Crawl's going to be going to Julius' lab, and he's going to be spamming the action button to pick up a whole bunch of boomerangs. Are you ready for the boomerang spam? Yeah. What is your favorite boomerang call? The, uh... Infrared. Infrared. Fascinating. Now, the reason why Crawl did a save game there is because the game is a little bit funky about registering the fact that you actually got the boomerangs if you do a main menu. So we do the save there just to force the fact that, hey, yes, we do have these boomerangs, and then it also sets us up nicely for that little menu warp as well to get us into the center of the level. And another nice, um, another nice hub for this one. And you actually yeah. got that one a bit cleaner than the first one. Yeah. That's about how it should look optimally. So the first one I kind of lost the swim, but that one I swam straight into the portal. Mm-hmm. Okay. So yeah, that's the kaboomerang thing. You you skipped one of them. Yeah, and then I ended up I ended up <laughs> yep. like biting towards it to like save a better time until I just did it there. Wow. That's crazy. Follow me and do as I say. Oh yeah, so the kaboomerang here, you can see the ice block on the other side of this little thing here. That essentially is why we had to go back to Rainbow Cliffs there, was so that we can get the boomerang so that we can break that without having the flame ring. Um, I remember finding that, and then, while I was routing the category with Matt, it's like, cool, we've solved it. <laughs> yeah, that and... way, I remember we, like, in the first, like, first, like, day of us trying to route this, or you trying to route this, you had us go through Hub 1 and actually get, like, you know, defeat the bowl, and then do everything else after that, but then you guys go um... after this, I'm pretty sure, at least, right? No, 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 we... I know, that we was never... me that thought we had we to never defeat the bowl that tried routing this. <laughs> Dude, remember when you tried to route Rainbow Scale Percent? Yeah, that one was fun. <laughs> Let's just say the route went from like 20 minutes to three, what's it, like three minutes. It's like four, <laughs> it's around 420 now, I think. Yeah, it's 429. Yep. <laughs> I think Hama did milliseconds on that one just so that it's like, you know, it's in the 420s. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, we're into the last level here. This is beyond the black stump, and this level has got beyond one of the longest swims here. Let's also I make a quick, quick interjection on a, a send up update. Yeah, of course. Um, we have had a $30 donation come in, anonymous, no comment, but thank you very much. And they did put that uh, amount towards the incentive, which means we are at $35 out of the $50. So just $15 more will get us to that bonus run. Um, we are just that close. Feel free to get your donations in. There are just a few minutes left. Mm -hmm. Am I stuck? Okay, good. <laughs> no, no, you're not stuck. Um, you can shoot the log and then you can actually kind of fix that, but you kind of gone around already. Uh, oh, so you, imagine if you're a mega rank kit on something there. Oh, God. Yeah, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a deceptively difficult uh, skip, that one. Yeah. And it, also, the exclusion on the too. Kaboom ranks is so bad. Alright. So, just coming up here, one of the absolutely longest swims in the game. It literally lasts for like a whole minute, and we're essentially going to be swimming past a whole, whole bunch of things. Swimming past a whole bunch of things. Swimming up the entire mountain, basically. Um, any particular part of it that scares you, Coral? Uh, going up the log uh, platforming section. 
That part probably scares me the most. The log platform is yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, like this area I'm about to get to right here. Mm -hmm. Still got that swim going there. And we're kind of starting to come up on the very final stretch of the level here as well. Um, I believe it's a death warp back down, right? Yeah, you're yeah. going to be taking a whole bunch of damage while yeeting yourself off the side of this mountain here. Yeah, if it's I funny do this as well because. Well, cool. Check this out here. I'm going to try to land on this very edge here so that way I'll fall and just nice. land directly down here next to this other cog. I don't think I practiced that one out. That was quite nicely done. I think Karma might have actually like hard landed into the cogs there, but like you'd already gone through most of the damage animation, so that was very well done. Yep. And then I'm I think you're able to double damage off this. Here. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm gonna wait until the particles fade away, and then I'm gonna do that. And mm, didn't should've quite started, fully yeah, should've slide started falling, but that's fine. <laughs> you started taking the full damage animation there, but you fell into the cog to block it. Yep. <laughs> you had me going there for a second. Yeah, but now we need to go and uh, take damage the quickest way we know how right here, which is sadly having to come over here and jump all the way down from uh, this ledge up here. Mm -hmm. I think there's actually a way that you can take double damage off of that bit, probably. So that might also be another optimal way of damaging up there. Maybe. Yeah, so there is something that I can do with Boonie in this run. I'm just not 100% sure what it is, so I don't even try to do that. Do you know anything about Boonie? Um, no, I'm not particularly sure. All I really know is that Kama mentioned in his world record that he messed up the Boonie strat. So. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Alright, so we should be at 7 there, right? Yes, because I know, I know where the other three are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like one on the side, but there are one in the little cave, and then the final launcher, launcher flower celebration one. Uh, I don't think this isn't going to beat you on. That's unfortunate. How far are you off? Uh, I don't know, but I'm at 3510 now, so by the time I get the next cog, will be when your run is ending, I think. Mm-hmm. But this still might be a PB for me, so that's pretty cool. And all we gotta do is just run to that cog now, and that's it. Okay. And yeah, this looks like it's gonna be a PB by a handful of seconds. And that is time. 35.42 it looks like I just got. Maybe a 35.43? Yeah, somewhere in that ballpark. I'm not sure how accurate the start timer was, but I think it's within a second or so, so yeah. I'm um, just watching the stream back. Uh, I would say a 41 or a 42 even. I mean, my auto splitter is saying I got, is saying I got a 42, so I'm guessing like that's what I'm basing that off of, because I had my auto splitter running at the in the background during this run. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so that's, that's pretty cool. We got, we got that. And that is all golden cogs. Let me actually go and check and make sure I have them all. Okay, good, I do. <laughs> one fucking <your> egg! <laughs> one rainbow scale, one picture, one thunder egg. Alright, so... I think that's... So I, have, I do have some yeah. good news uh, about did the incentive. Uh, oh, we did all meet. Right. We did meet the run. We had two $15 donations come in right last minute. Um, one from Anonymous, who just says meow. Thank you for your meow. We appreciate it. And one Thank from you. Illegally Sam says, did someone say $15? Appreciate you both donating. We have met that run. All right. So, yeah, uh, wow. something unfortunate <laughs> might happen here uh, in a second. 
you guys might lose all connection with me for a good two minutes because for some reason, every now and then when I exit Ty, my entire PC just crashes. So hopefully that doesn't happen and I need to uh, exit Ty before I can start the next run for reasons that Lon can explain. Yeah, I'll just explain that here. So okay, essentially, it, it crash, so we're good. <laughs> yeah, essentially Ty does have a bit of a memory leak and because of how many main menus this category has, how many levels we have to like enter, leave again, there's more levels than any percent and such, um, more levels that leak more memory. Um, we believe that's associated with the music somehow, but we're not certain, even if you have the music muted. Um, but yeah, so we just need to be careful of that, so we just restart our game after every few attempts and such. But since it's such a long category and cheap percent all levels is going to be going into all the levels, <laughs> he's just doing that as a precautionary measure so we don't get a crash in the middle of next run. Yeah, we'll actually be also defeated in the final boss in this run too, so you guys will be able to see the most difficult trick in the run in my opinion at the very end. Well, oh, most difficult trick in the run? Actually, you know, that, that's, a, that's a lie, yeah. <laughs> Doom Clip is not as hard I, I, as I think that double buzz cheese swim you got is more difficult, Coral. Yeah, I pretty, I'm actually very satisfied I got that in a PB, because mm -hmm. my, last, my last run did PB by about 7 seconds, so that is pretty cool. But. So, mm -hmm. if you guys yeah, are ready so... to start, then I'll be, I'm ready whenever. Cool. She present all levels. And once again, thank you as well to everyone who made the incentive there. I'm glad that you guys enjoyed thank the so run, much. and... Let's show you some more tie. Yep, we've got the uh, yep, the tracker or overlay updated. We're on cheap percent all levels, ready to go on your countdown. All right, so, so on... the ECA for the run should probably be something let's, like fifteen minutes. You reckon? Let's make call? it. Let's make it. Let's make it eighteen minutes, just because I know that I could mess up quite a little bit in this run. And okay. Okay. PB. My time that I'm going comparing against right now is a thirteen eleven. I don't know if it's my actual PB or not, but. Uh, you have 13, 53 on the board. Also, I guess this and is not my PB. Matt has or a 15, my... 26. Hmm. So, somewhere 15 to 18 minutes should be pretty safe on that estimate. Yeah. Once you guys are ready, just give us the word and we can start. If I think we're ready to roll when you are, go ahead and give us a countdown and get started. All right. So, five, four, three, two, one, go. <laughs> Yeah, so I think first level we go to is ship breaks here, yeah? No, it's two up. Is it actually two up? Yep, oh, I just accidentally did the uh, level select cheat, but that's fine. <laughs> uh, I, I, Lon, what's the code cheap for- Cheat percent all levels, that's true. Oh yeah, cheat percent. Okay, uh, I got it, I got it. That, that's why you go to two up first, because you don't need to unlock the swims. <laughs> So here's, really like, intense. actually probably the coolest trick in the run already. Gonna... Oh, hopefully... Put down there. There we go. Funny, some people use metronomes for that, but yeah, essentially what Coral just did there is he was trying the Doom Rank, and right when, like, in the recovery for the Doom Rank or whatever, there's, like, this little one-frame window that you're able to jump again, and you can essentially string these together, and... Coral's also the first person that was able to ever do gate skip using the Doomerang exclusively. <laughs> so, yeah, and the funniest um, part about that is it was literally the day before the ground swimming was found, meaning it was only about like three days before the actual gate skip was found. Mm -hmm. So yeah, quite a funny one. I think um, Mass is the second person to have ever, ever gone from that one. He, he went and like set up a metronome and like practiced it for for ages and yeah it's, it's a funny truck i think it's 156 bpm or something like that i have no Anyways, idea so, i never used a metronome for it getting our swims across here to the portal here and essentially that is the goal of this this category you go into every single one of those portals and boom you're through okay so unlike many of the other ones and i think i mentioned this a little bit during the agc run as well but essentially this category is all about Go as fast as you can from point A to point B. You don't need to worry about any collectibles or anything because you've got cheat codes. <laughs> you can use the cheat codes instead of having to collect things. And absolutely don't amazing bug <laughs> cheese swim. Yeah, don't ask me how I'm Holy! That was, that was the moving setup that I was talking about there. And while you didn't like 
frame like frame perfect jump into it like dang dude like that that would fly in any percent run well done thank you <laughs> all right um so... frosty ranks and you can jump over the left side here yeah i forgot about that thank you for reminding me <laughs> Yeah, this was one of the cool ones that I found here because you want to get the seahorse so that you can do the spire swim here. So in this level, technically, you do want to like you know collect one or two things here. You can just get the seahorse on the way, and that essentially allows you to swim straight up to the end, nice and quick. And you use a swim similar swim location to what you do in AGC there, so it's a pretty pretty cool one. It's funny actually. Um, so I got the world record on on this category. Basically, um, I think it was like Kama and Coral. I, I think it might have just been you, Coral. Um, went and did the route after I said, oh yeah, you know, you probably do these kind of things or whatever. Um, or it might have been Vera for something to run. And I was like, I think I can improve this route. So I went and did a no reset run. And it was the day after Matt found the ski swim. So then I got the world record using this gigantic, like, one and a half two minute skip but then i also added like another 30 to 40 seconds of my own time saves and stuff like that <laughs> and matt was like lord you were meant to let me get the world record and i was like sorry it was unoptimized i was doing one attempt i wanted to uh, it was a good laugh but yeah, i'm gonna got that now. yeah i don't know and why this fire is this is a spire swim moment here. This is one of the hardest tricks. You essentially need to dive and have the seahorse prevent you from sliding back out into the water here. This is also one of the newer spire swim setups. Oh, that was sketchy. <laughs> this is one of the new spire swim setups that we use. We used to kind of like hook around the mountain a little bit more than what we used to. Uh, than what we do now, sorry. Um, instead we go a lot tighter. Anyways, that is hub one done. Now we're going to be heading over to, I assume... Which hub are you doing? Okay, I'm you're doing hub three. next. Yep. Yeah. yeah, so you guys might have noticed I actually do have, like, uh, a change level cheat in uh, my menu, and that's because I accidentally did the uh, level select cheat that was built into this game uh, instead of giving myself all the boomerangs that I needed, but as long as I don't use it, then it, this should still be a valid run, because if we you want can... to, we... If we wanted to, we could allow people to just use the uh, level select come cheats on, to build literally from level to level, but... I think the overall movement makes this run just slightly better, so... Oh, and I got some fall damage, that's great. Mm -hmm. Um, I think you can do the level select cheat code again, so that it doesn't show up. Yeah, but in order to do that, I need to bite, so I, uh, would or, be losing time. You can do it while you're swimming. Yeah, true. Okay, so let me actually and go speaking train. of swims, you got a big swim here. Oh, right. That's right. <laughs> Ooh, high shadows, let's go! No, it's high oh, no, distance. Let's go distance. <laughs> Okay, there we go, now we're back to normal. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I mean, like a macro would make that uh, section a lot easier. So I uh, actually have not ran this category in quite a long time, so I'm pretty... Uh, I'm pretty happy that most of my time loss came from Spire Swim. Mm -hmm. Which that's, you know, yeah, to be you... expected sometimes, because Spire Swim... Like, I made Spire Swim in my AGC run look very easy, because I think I got a first try, but... You got it pretty, pretty quickly in any case. Like, you know, if I got that in an AGC run, I'd take that. Um, I usually like to start mine like pretty, like a decent bit further length than that. It's, it's a funky one. Like you get a lot of ground, ground scams there. Yeah. Um, one of the things that kind of affects some of those swims when we're just staring at a wall, I don't believe this level has it, but many levels have these things called tides, where oh, it's more like waves in a sense, where they kind of have like a set wave pattern. And the water will go up and down, and that will actually affect your ability to dive and land into water versus landing on shore. Like, um, well, it's like the difference between shallow water and ground. Basically, whether high will like bonk into the ground or continue swimming. So yeah, it's a funny reason. little factor that can make one spot work one moment and not work the next. Yeah, but uh, tides is also the reason why I was messing up my uh, spires from so much because not only do I need to like have, you know, tie the tide to be right for me to do the ground swim, but I also need to have the seahorse set at a good tide. And also, that mm -hmm. was very sketchy there. I was worried I was going to lose, like, three minutes there. Yeah, if yeah, I, mess up, if I messed up that ground, that lot ass ground swim at any given moment, oh, I, I don't know if I swear, sorry about that. But, but, uh, yeah, if I had messed that up at any given moment, then I would have been losing at least, like, a minute and a half to 
two minutes, I think. Mm -hmm. Anyways, that's the end of Hub Free there. Um, Hub Free is pretty short actually because two of two of the levels have like skips that just immediately put you to the end basically. Not even that's going to be talking like us into Hub Two. With Rex Mark, we literally just run to the portal at the end or swim to it. But like Outback Safari is also going to be pretty similar. So, but I'll let you go. Yeah, Outback Safari, you literally load into the level and done. <laughs> yeah, the portal is right at the beginning of the level, and I missed that. Bad. You can still get this from Adam. Yeah. 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 I just wanted to not, not have to do the fell damage. Nah, you just wanted to pull on the heartstrings of the viewers. <laughs> no, I like I was. But to pull to... on the heartstrings of the viewers more, Cherry. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> All so, right. So running down the mountain here. Yeah, I will um, be getting I think we lost typically like to go time. down the left side because yeah. we like to get a get a swim off of the left pool there, and we do that kind of like with ice, typically, but you, do you do have to learn the setup for it. It's a bit funky. Yeah, no, I don't know that setup, so I'm just gonna run over here about as quick as I can and do this long swim setup. You gonna be doing aqua swim? Uh, probably not. Come over here, line up with these two dots on the wall, and hopefully- Okay, that's aqua swim. swim. Okay, right. yeah. Let me try it again, and if not, then I'll just get out and walk. Now, let me actually give it a couple more tries, because it's really worth it in this run, because we have to walk a long ways to the portal from here, so... Okay, there we go. Third there try. We go. Third, try. In, third try launch in this run is actually not bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just for context, um, Karma Crimson, the world record holder, I think undisputedly the best player at the game at the moment. Um, I think his consistency on that one is like 25% to one third, and that's a swim that we use um, in 100%. Um, you don't actually have to do this funny swimming along here, by the way. You can just swim like hard up the uh, left yeah. side of the mountain. Yep, thank you. I forgot about that. And skip past all the opals. Yeah. Then the portal should be up here pretty much right. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> that put you down the mountain. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah, I don't know what those things are All called, right. but that dude was like, what's done? Ready for the shortest level, okay? Everyone, hold on to your seats. Wrong way. Yep. I, I, I'm not even done. I didn't even level. bother doing, uh... Okay, and bridge on the river tide. This is the final level here. Um, Where's the portal for this one? Good question. I really can't uh, remember. Dennis's well, house. It's, it's, Dennis's yeah. house. All right. Yeah, yeah, okay. We've got like 20, 30 seconds left in this one. Anything you want to say, Coral? No, we don't have 20, 30 seconds left, because remember, we need to beat the final boss. Oh, oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, oh, and uh... <laughs> let's just get that Yeah, I, again. I think that's the right call. I think yeah. that's the right call. Yeah. There are just Dude, times where you randomly... Out of it. There are just times where you randomly lose the best swim, and you... Like, the, the best backup is literally just, you know, restarting. Yeah, yeah. Like, especially right up there, because there is, um, I don't think there's any ground some spots, like, up around here at all. Which, no, which like, not. it looks like there should be a lot, because water right here. Mm -hmm. Alright, so this is the last full level, but we're still going to have to go through, like, the ending gauntlet section of the game here. So, this isn't the last portal yet. We did go all the way to the credits, but it's kind of, like, two, three minutes from here. Dude, I thought you were about to ch <laughs> change yeah, level no, two. I, I'm, I All right. Do that. And also, ladies and gentlemen, we have the Zappy Rang. Okay, the Zappy Rang is actually used in this category. Okay, round of applause for the Zappy Rang. <laughs> Any percent we don't use that Doom Rang. I could have done a Swag Gate skip there, but... I what, with your Doom Rang? Uh, no, with, like, the regular Gate <laughs> Because, like, uh, Doom or Endgate Skip would be cool to show off, but, like, honestly, like, I would I would not be able to do it. Because I could barely do the one Doom or End jump earlier. <laughs> Alright, so this is the cast pass skip here. Essentially, we do a nice jump and then dive into the water. This is the same as any percent here, so if you're familiar with any percent, might be looking a little bit familiar. Make sure... Ooh, boy. That is a quick little void there. If we were on the OG console, actually, on the Xbox version specifically, actually, there's, like, a random, like, under-level ground plane that you can run on, and you can actually run all the way to the portal. It's really weird. Is that you um, you should swap to, your, swap to your zoom ring, by the way. It'll make your, um, it'll make your shot easier later. Let me get past first. 
you want to explain uh, what I'm actually trying to do here? Okay. Yeah, so essentially Coral is just trying to jump on a tree here and then he's going out of bounds and then swaps to that zoomerang. There we go. And essentially that gets him to a nice little water plane that is under the level and he's going to cut across. Transition water plane, that's why you see him um, have that change in color there. It also changes like the height of where the different bits are and stuff. Essentially he's just having to navigate these different um, water volumes so that he is not falling into the void like he did before unfortunately. Nice, he's going to be diving into the water. Ooh, remember you have your zoom ring so swim doesn't do anything. Oh yeah, I forgot we don't need to do that category. Mm -hmm. Ooh, we get the little bomb jump there. And uh, you want to aim to the side of it. Because of the curve of the rank. There we go. So it's a little bit of a funky one, but the zoom ranks can be faster than the fastest ground swim strat. Which Coral kind of like half went for mentally. Yeah, I was <laughs> trying to, but then I just bit the frill, so. Yeah. And I did forget too that it is faster than the zoom rank, but. I wanted to show off the uh, crest one. Yeah, I think the zoom ring is only like two or three seconds faster than the crest one. Yeah. And I, I mean, like, I, if I had actually gotten that crest one and done it in the same way, I would have probably just, uh, you know, broken even there because I did mess up the zoom ring throws quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Kama actually got the crest one in his last marathon run. And <laughs> he was popping off. He was like, how did I just get that? Yeah. I think in the end he ended up getting like five seconds off of my PB or something, just in a no reset marathon run. Right I'm just like, what's it, any percent? So good. Yeah, it was any percent. So. Getting an extra life here for the memes. Yep, and for the safety because you never know what could happen. Mm -hmm. We are in a so, marathon yeah, run here... after all, so safety is, you know, very needed. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Coral, you have seven lives, and if you run out of lives, you can just hit continue. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I forgot, I forgot we're not on a hard floor mode. Oh, the zoom rank! He's gonna go backwards! Oh, there we go! He almost fell into lava. Yep. The, the doom ranks have this funny property where whenever you go into a cutscene, they'll kind of like flip you around. Anyways, so this is kind of like the last 30 seconds of the run here. One of the hardest skips in the game. Um, and, yeah. Anything you want to say, Coral? Once again, thank you everyone for donating for the incentive here. We hope that you enjoyed this cheap percent all levels run. Or is yours? Yeah, uh, thank you for having me here. Uh, in a second here, I'm going to go silent so I can actually try to get this trick, but uh, I'm taking here. Okay, good. Time. Woo. I should. I'm sorry about that. I should have uh, warned on time earlier, but... <laughs> Oh good, I can I can tell you what the timer would have been. I got my my uh, auto splitter saying fifteen twenty in RTA time, so Yeah, fifteen nineteen and fifteen twenty, one of the two. Alright, so that's yeah, that's about what we were expecting. Yeah. GG yeah, so well I, played. Uh Alright, so I guess that's it then, so uh, if you guys like this Feel free to follow me on Twitch if you would like. Uh, I do runs this game every now and then. Uh, I'm hoping to try to do more soon, but uh, right now it's just kind of difficult to find the time and energy to stream. So I'm, I'm glad I was able to do this run for you guys and try to get back into this game. But thank you guys. Yep. Thanks for, and for any up for having me. <laughs> and anyone watching from the Thai community as well, feel free to check and a follow. Have a look at some other speedruns, other games and such, and of course, feel free to look into the chair see anyone. Thank you for having us, Indie Phone, and thank you for having me, Coral. Thank you. Game's over. Thank you for coming. And thank you, thank you for those uh, those fantastic pairs of runs, Coral, and thank you also to uh, Sir Lawrence for commentating. It's been a pleasure having you both on this here Indie Thon Summer 2023, benefiting the Samaritans. Um, we are gonna have ourselves going into another break we'll be setting up the next run so hang tight listen to some tunes and we'll be back in a little bit